with yeah chapter 11 right so chapter 11 so um we were looking at um, let me just project the Yeah, so uh, we're looking at chap uh, chapter 11, verses 7 onwards. So 7 to 11, he's saying, you know, he's not at all inferior um, to the most eminent or, you know, the, the ones, the apostles whom you think are uh, you know, very good, or whom you think are of uh, you know, great caliber. We are, uh, you know, we are not at all, in, uh, I'm not at all inferior to any of them. Okay, And uh, he goes on to say, about a speech, yes, he was not like them. He could not speak in a polished way, sophisticated way. Um, they were all trained orators, whereas he was not. So he says that, and then he also, you know, truthfully, he says, you know, though I might be, you know, untrained in maybe the way to communicate through speech and all that, but I am not so when it comes to knowledge. Okay, and. Um, Verse uh, seven, he says, "You know, did I hum? Did I commit sin? Did I sin in humbling myself and not really taking money from you for my rightful expenses when I came and shared the gospel?" And he says, "I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you." And he also mentions the Macedonian church. You know, I what I lacked, uh, even he says, even when I was present with you, you know, for my expenses. Uh, I did not take money from you. Okay, I did not. Uh, I was a burden to no one. I did not want to be a burden to anyone. I did not take money from you. What I lacked, financially speaking, what I lacked, um, the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied. So Macedonia region, Philippi, and you know the uh, uh, the surrounding regions. They, uh, he he mentions about that that church, you know, those those churches in verse, um, sorry, in chapter eight, he talks about how these churches were actually poor churches, but they gave, right? So, he's saying, you know, this these churches actually gave, right? They gave, and in a sense, it it seemed as if I was robbing other churches, you know. Is is it's not saying, you know, it's not like he actually robbed, but he's saying it 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 seemed like that I was robbing. Uh, other churches in in order to um, in order to uh, minister to you, like you know, he's saying I was taking wages from the other churches in order to minister to you. So I was a burden to no one. I did not, uh, you know, I did not take expense uh, any expense from you. So, so we see the same thing. Uh, Paul writing to the Ephesian church, and he says, you know, I coveted no one's silver, gold clothing um, and you know that I worked with these hands in order to provide for the need and and so on so and uh, and Paul also says you know I I will continue to do this okay verse 12 okay I will continue to do this um, just a minute sorry um, yeah so Paul says, "I you know I will I will continue to do this. I'll continue to live in in this manner, right?" And he says, "You know I'll I'll make this my boast, okay? Um, that yes, that I will not burden you. So that's my boast. That I will provide for my own needs. You know that that's my boast. I will labor. You know these things I will continue to do." Okay, um, so verse twelve onwards, he says, "What I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity." Okay, um, so we need to see that carefully. I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. So here are some people, here are some ministers of God, and uh, they are um, uh, they are. Uh, they are boasting about themselves. They are boasting about, they are even saying that, uh, you know, they're comparing themselves to Paul and the ministry team. So they are boasting about this. So he's boasting about, you know, how effective they are, etc. So now he's saying, you know, I will not give them an opportunity to boast. I'll cut off the opportunity. 
right i will give them i will not give them an opportunity to boast like that because this is how i'm living like i'm living i'm not being a burden to you and this is how i'm ministering in my ministry i'm not coming and demanding anything and even my expenses i'm trying to uh you know meet those expenses with my own work my with my own labor okay so is uh, is is you know i i will give them i will not give them an opportunity to boast because in this area they cannot boast because i know that they are not living like that they are not living like that right and verse 13 for such are false apostles okay the way they live false apostles are like that in other say in other in other words he's saying you know these are false apostles you know earlier he said uh we're talking about another jesus they're talking about they bringing sharing another spirit uh, they bring another gospel right so he's saying for such a false apostles even their lifestyle and everything you know such a false apostles deceitful workers okay so they are workers but they are working with lies and deception you know, wanting to cheat people want pretending to do something but actually wanting to for you know defraud or or cheat people deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of christ okay so he's saying such are false apostles now these false apostles their lifestyle is different their message is different uh, such such are they right and um he's saying no wonder why he's saying you know why are the false apostles like that because satan himself transforms into an angel of light okay so these are false apostles outwardly they put on a, a big show but inwardly you know they are full of deception like their motives are not pure the way they live is not pure and they like satan how he transforms himself into an angel of light you know outwardly the appearance wise it's like an angel of light people are drawn saying wow wonderful but uh, you know the apostles are like that right transforming themselves into apostles of christ verse 14 and no wonder for satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light so just like how satan does transform himself so also the apostles false apostles they transform verse 15 for it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works meaning you know, they are actually serving satan okay he's saying uh, his ministers he's referring to these false apostles as satan's ministers right and what are they doing they are transforming themselves into ministers of righteousness they are they are trying to portray themselves and and make themselves look as if they are ministers of righteousness but their end the end result will be according to their works their works are denying it right um so uh, he's saying you know they are they are full of deceit they are full of uh, uh, guile and this is their practice okay so uh yeah so in in a sense he's warning the people warning the church against the false apostles right um he's warning them against the message they bring he's warning them against uh, the manner of uh, the spirit in which by which they minister he's warning them against the the gospel they bring uh, you know the, what they are sharing uh, and the kind the the lord the jesus himself you know the what are they portraying who who are they portraying right so all that he uh, he warns them about and uh, so he exposes their ministry right verse 16 i say again let no one think me a fool if otherwise at least receive me as a fool that i may i also may boast a little um what i speak i speak not according to the lord but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting 
seeing that many boast according to the flesh, I also will boast. For you put up with fools gladly, since you yourselves are wise. For you put up with it if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face. To our shame, I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever anyone is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. So here, um, again, he is, um, he's talking about you know, what has actually happened uh, uh, about these uh, false apostles. He's, uh, he's saying, you know, uh, I, I'm boasting. He's saying, in a, in a sense, you know, I'm talking about myself, myself and my life, and it looks like boasting. It looks like foolish boasting, right? So uh, please receive me as a fool. Okay, it seems foolish, but uh, he's saying, just listen, receive me as a fool. Okay, no problem. I know it looks foolish to talk about myself and to boast, you know, uh, about myself, but but you listen, you see, receive me as a fool, uh, that I may boast a little. Okay. And uh, what I'm speaking and saying, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, saying according to the Lord in the sense that it's not inspired. But, uh, but I, what is happening, I'm just declaring to you. Okay. Since that many boast according to the flesh, I also will boast. For, and he's saying, you know, many people are boasting, and I, and it's all the boast is according to the flesh. He's referring to the false apostles. He's referring to those in the. Corinthian church, some of them in the Corinthian church also, um, you know, who are who are boasting. Um, so he's saying, um, so I will also boast. Okay, I will also talk about this. Okay, now he uh, earlier he talked about uh, how they uh, uh, how the uh, false apostles, um, you know, he, he talks about certain things, right? He, he describes them. Um, he says they are deceitful workers. Um, who three things he mentions earlier? Um, sorry, yeah. So they're deceitful workers who conceal the truth, misrepresent the truth. So he's saying they are deceitful. Right. Secondly, he says they are unrighteous. Right? They disguise in order to portray themselves as apostles of Christ, but actually they are not. Just like how Satan transforms himself into an angel of light, they do that also, and their reward will be according to their works. Here he continues to describe the false apostles, and uh, he, uh, you know, this verse verse twenty, uh, verse twenty talks about that, and uh, so let's look at some of the things that he says. Okay, verse uh, point number four here. He says they bring into bondage okay that is one of their traits they bring into bondage he says uh, for you put up with it he's saying you know you are tolerating that but this is what is happening right if one brings you into bondage bondage to sin bondage to false doctrine false teaching they are doing that and he also says they devour if one devours you, you now you're tolerating that also they are devouring you. So devour means to literally, the word used there means to waste or forcibly take away or ruin you. Okay, so, um, you know, in uh, normal English, it just means that, you know, one is completely eating you up, right? Devouring you. So they are wasting you. They are forcibly taking away certain things from you. They are ruining your, your life, um, but you're tolerating that. Okay, so, so we see that false apostles, they devour, they do this. And uh, he says, um, uh, again, if one takes from you, so they are literally, they are taking, they are taking what belongs rightfully um, to another person. So they take away that, they either manipulate, exploit, uh, through lies, they are taking away, you know, what belongs to them, material things and, and finances and all that they're taking away from you. Um, and then it says, if one exalts himself, right? So the false apostle exalts oneself and not the Lord Jesus. Right? They exalt themselves in the name or in the 
uh, what is the reason they are ministering the gospel and uh, they say that they are ministering the gospel and in, in doing so they exalt themselves they talk highly about themselves they talk highly about their accomplishments they are exalting themselves right and uh, and lastly he says if one strikes you on the face literally they are you know hitting the believers on the face uh, maybe by their conduct by the words they speak by the way they live their life they literally it's like hitting them on their face so he's saying you know he's listing all this and he's saying okay these this or, or these are the characteristics of whom you call as whom you have you know tolerated as apostles who have been visiting ministering or in the name of ministry you know who've been doing all this in your lives so he's saying you know you put up with it verse 21 says to our shame i say you know he's saying that in a very sarcastic manner he's saying you know we are we too weak for all this we won't do it right we are too weak to live like that yes we are weak people in what way we can't we can't do this we don't want to do this yes yeah, sir you have a question uh um, oh, no sorry said was an accident okay okay no problem no problem sorry that's fine um so we're saying you know we are we are too weak to do this yes we are weak people you know because earlier he says no you you are saying that this person is weak you're saying that paul is weak apostle paul is weak you're saying that you know these people are weak um he's saying yeah we are weak because we are too weak to do all this the way these other people are you know uh, doing this to you bringing into bondage uh wasting your life wasting the things taking away from you ruining you um it's literally like hitting you on the face yeah we are too weak to do this right in other words he's saying you know we've never done that and we'll never do this and we we don't do that you no know, he's saying you know in other words he's saying just open your eyes and see see the difference right they are not actually apostles of christ see the difference okay and here from verse 22 onwards he talks about uh is uh, again comparing him personally and he's saying you know uh, is comparing him with the other apostles and then he goes on to talk about some of the things that he personally has uh, underwent as undergone in ministry what he uh, what he underwent in ministry right so here uh, he's he's sharing that he's saying verse 22 onwards are they hebrews so am i are they israelites so am i are they the seed of abraham so am i are they ministers of christ i speak as a fool i am more and um, he goes on to talk from here till um, i think it's verse 33 right uh, verse 33 he talks about his experience okay so so he asks some questions you know are they hebrews he says so am i they yeah, and they and so he uh, the question is uh, the answer to that is yes you know they are hebrews and he's saying so am i i'm also a hebrew are they israelites well i am also an israelite are they seed of abraham or they are descendants of abraham like in, in naturally speaking yes so am i i am also a descendant of abraham are they uh, are they ministers of christ okay so then he goes on to say you know yes i speak i am more than they i'm more of a minister of christ than they are okay if you think that these are qualifications right uh, their physical birth and their background and the you know they are descended from um from the jews from the israelites and you know uh, from abraham saying yes i qualify i also qualify okay but he goes on to talk about some of the other qualification he say are they ministers of christ and he says i am more than that i am more you know i'm i'm a i'm a servant of christ but i am more than that okay and he goes on to 
to say what his qualifications are to be uh, uh, you know in a to say that he is more of a minister of christ than them what are his qualifications very interesting to see that right verse 22 onwards to 33 okay so he says um, i am more in labors more abundant in stripes above measure in prisons more frequently in deaths often from the jews five times i received 40 stripes minus one three times i was beaten with rods once i was stoned three times i was shipwrecked a night and a day i have been in the deep in journeys often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils, peril meaning danger, right? In perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside the other things, uh, what comes upon me daily uh, my deep concern for all the churches. Um, who is weak and am I not? I am not weak. Who is made to stumble and I'm not? I do not burn with indignation. If I must boast, I must boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus. The governor under Aretas, the king, was guarding the city of Damas the Damascenes with a garrison desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from their hands. So he's you know, describing all the dangers, all the difficulties, and uh, you know, all the uh, persecution and everything that he went through as a minister of Christ, as a servant of Christ. And the word he uses there, you know, as a minister is a humble servant. You know, the Greek diakonos means a, a menial worker, you know, someone who doesn't mind getting his hands dirty, right? a menial, a laborer. So he says, this is how I was. This is how I ministered. And therefore, these are my qualifications or credentials to be the minister of God. So he's saying, I will, I will boast concerning my weakness, like feebleness. He uses the word infirmity, and and the Greek word means feebleness of body or feebleness, weakness of body and mind. He says, uh, and and then he says, you know, I was let down in a basket in in Damascus, and uh, uh, people were guarding, and uh, you know, I I escaped in that manner. So this is what. I, this is how I lived. This is how I ministered. Okay, so um, he, he, he continues in the same manner in chapter 12, um, where he's talking about his ministry. But he's also, now he goes on, first he starts with, the, you know, all the difficulties, all the challenges, and all the discomfort that he has faced in ministry and has continued to minister, right? not only facing that, just continue to minister despite that. And for him, for Paul, that's a qualification. He says, I minister as a servant. And as a servant, I have undergone all these difficulties. And for me, it's it's nothing. It, it's like, uh, for me, this is just a qualification. This is just like my credentials in ministry. Okay, that's how he considers it, right? And then he, uh, in verse, in, sorry, in chapter 12, he goes on to talk about some of his spiritual experiences, some of the encounters, or one of them, he talks about that. Uh, and also, he goes on to talk about, um, you know, the signs of the apostle. Um, he, ta he talks about that. Um, he talks about signs and wonders and so on, right? So as much as the supernatural was part of his life, he says, you know, these were also part of my life. Right? These these things that happened, these were also part of my life. And these uh, qualify me to be a servant of Christ, to be a minister of Christ. That is who I am. Okay. Um, so 
he's comparing that with how the the false apostles lived their lives so they were living not as servants but really to to take from people they were living to forcefully take to cheat people to to you know feed on people to take what belonged to people whereas paul is saying you know i did not even take any money from you even for my rightful expenses right so um which is which is which is fine you know this is the way the lord instituted it that those who you know share the gospel must live by the gospel in the sense um, he, you know in another place uh, where paul says you know those who are uh, those who are taught the word let them share in everything uh, in, in material things with the ones who teach them so um this is how god instituted it but then he's saying and he's going beyond it and he's saying i i did not take i did not you know take anything i i decided that i will take care of my needs or others were giving and i received that and i did not take from you okay so probably paul knew some of these problems and he didn't want anyone to blame his ministry like even when it comes to money being taken from here to jerusalem you know to the poor in jerusalem he puts in some of those safety measures right he says uh, you know uh, we will make sure that this goes and reaches safely and it's used in the right manner but you choose right we will take that person um, whom you choose and uh, you appoint so that you know there's no pointing of fingers there's no uh, you know blame or anything uh, there's no blaming you know right so we will make sure that that is used in the right manner so probably paul felt that okay this kind of uh, thing was there in the church so he's taking all these uh, precautions and um, so uh, yeah so chapter 11 we see some of these things so we get an insight into the kind of difficulties it was there during which was there during paul's time right we know that travel was not safe travel was uh, not as comfortable as it it is now right they had to travel on horses or donkeys and if it was land they had to travel on ships and boats if it was sea and uh, uh, it was not sturdy it was not uh, you know it is not the safest ones safe it modes uh, of transport because um, well they were not as sophisticated as developed as uh, the, as they are now so if there was a storm if there was something there they would you know they could they they had every chance of losing their lives um but on top of that he was also uh, being hunted down right he was uh, his own countrymen he said we mentions that right in perils of my own countrymen in perils of robbers so they were other human beings other people uh, who were out to get him right maybe rob him and also um, you know uh, all these things were happening so so he he lists down all that so we get an insight into the difficulties of doing ministry right all the difficulties that were there during this time and despite that he went on these missionary journeys so when we think of missionary journeys it's it's um, you know today when we say okay uh, we go from here to the other place and we think of taking a train or a plane or whatever it's uh, it's so comfortable right but uh, and it's safe and and so on but it wasn't so and so we are able to you know appreciate the kind of zeal the kind of uh, ministry that paul did paul did and definitely by the grace of god like he himself uh you know he himself accepts it was because of the grace of god nothing else but the fact is that he was willing to labor even even more right okay so any questions on uh, further questions on chapter 10 chapter 11 um before we move on to um chapter 12 or anything that you um that you noticed that you saw um which was very very uh, you know something that spoke to you something that 
some of the things that you noticed you could share about that as well chapter 10 and chapter 11 So, um, for me, you know, the takeaway is that, um, you know, he's describing uh, the false apostles in chapter 11 and also uh, to a certain extent in chapter 10. Yeah, chapter uh, chapter 10 and uh, 11, right? So, so, those are some takeaways, you know, some lessons that we should not even entertain such thoughts. Uh, to live like that, that those are some things to completely avoid. And chapter 10, we see um, a very good explanation about the kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, weapons that we have to live and to fight um, the the spiritual warfare, right? The kind of weapons and and the kind of effect or the kind of results uh, it will actually bring casting down arguments you know, and strongholds and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So, you know, we have these spiritual weapons, the word of God, the, the blood of uh, the lamb, the name of Jesus uh, and the righteousness that he's covered us with and, and all that, right? So, um, so the thing is for us to live that kind of a life, right? to live that uh, spiritual life to live that overcoming life with the spiritual weapons, right? So that is uh, something. Yeah, Paul lived a life to be an example to the unbelievers. Yes, to the unbelievers and and to the believers as well, right? Okay. Um, anything else? Any other things that you noticed? What is your takeaway? What is your learning? Kanan said. Anything that you notice, anything that you learnt. Okay. So then let's um, let's move on to chapter 12. And uh, chapter 12, also, he's talking about how he ministered as an apostle and some of the, some of the details uh, he shares. So let's look at that, right? Okay. Um, Okay, so this is chapter 12. Um, it's just coming up on the screen, I think. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, Aaron. So even though he was in the flesh, Right. So um, that's also a very important point that uh, we live in the flesh. We live as human beings, but we can. We don't have to fight. So which means there is an option. See, you can choose to fight a carnal fight. Okay, according to uh, according to the flesh, you can fight. Right. Um, which means you you know you lash out in anger or you you know the thing is many of these things. Uh, let's say a spiritual attack could come through people, right? right? Through a false apostle, through uh, uh, you know, Satan will use anyone, right, to come against us. So when we say, um, you know, I'm fighting a spiritual battle, uh, even though I'm a human being, um, the options that are available for me are to, to fight a carnal battle to fight a spiritual battle so when i find a carnal battle now that will be against the person like against the person whom satan is using as a tool uh, that fight will be 
against that person. But when I find a, fight a spiritual battle, it'll be, be uh, it'll be against the spirit behind, which is causing that confusion, or um, you know, against the enemy, the actual enemy, the source, um, which is actually influencing or manipulating, uh, you know, the person, right? The spirit behind the person. Um, so, or the spirit that is causing this kind of confusion or whatever. So the spiritual battle is actually that, right? So yeah, when you say he chose to war with the, you know, in the spirit, so that means that he chose. Yeah, there was an option, but he chose. So he chose to not. He chose not to fight the person or the people, but the spirits that were, you know, influencing, directing them, controlling them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Kiran. So spiritual side, we we can we can be strong. Yeah. When we fight that uh, battle, we will be strong. We, these are very uh, nothing compared to carnal weapons, right? The spiritual weapons are of God. Right? That's what we see. Um, uh, one of the description, the way in which the, the, these spiritual weapons are described. Uh, that is in chapter 10 and verse 4, um, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, which means that, um, hey, these are godly weapons. right? So there's no way that um, these weapons cannot be effective in the battle. Right? These are godly weapons. Uh, so the, the only way it can be ineffective in the sense if I don't use it right, or if I don't continue using it, or if I, out of fear or discouragement, I stop using these weapons. You know, that's the only way these weapons uh, will be ineffective, or the spiritual battle, you know, uh, will be ineffective. Uh, because these weapons are mighty in God, and they do all this. They're mighty in God for pulling down, casting down, um, and bringing to captivity, you know, all these, all these things happen, right? Okay, so um, yeah, we have some more time. We we'll just look at. We'll start with chapter twelve, and we might have to continue in the next class, right? So we'll uh, start with chapter twelve. Uh, so he, uh, firstly, he he talks about uh, the encounter that he had. Okay, let's look at that. It is doubtful not profitable for me to boast, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven, and I know such a man, whether in the body or not out of the body, I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which is which it uh, which it is not lawful for a man to utter of such a one i will boast yet of myself i will not boast except in my infirmities for though i might desire to boast i will not be a fool for i will speak the truth but i refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears me to be. Okay. So Paul is uh, you know, saying, you know, I, I will boast of this person who has had this kind of experience. He's talking about himself. You know, it's, it's just a way of explaining. Um, you know, I will come to visions and revelations and, and then I know a man in Christ. You know, he's, he's referring to himself, uh, but uh, he's talking uh, about himself in this manner. Okay, so he's saying, although boasting will not achieve anything good or boastful uh, or anything good or useful, but uh, I want to share this spiritual experience. Okay, so um, uh, so he says, you know, he was caught up to uh, the third heavens. He's saying he's referring to himself as a man in Christ. He says he was caught up uh, to the third heaven and uh, he and about this experience, he, he's not sure whether it was in his body or out of body, right? right? So whether he, uh, he uh, uh, like his body was here and then he was lifted up in the spirit to the 
to the third heavens um he's not sure or whether he physically you know he was lifted up he was taken there that also he's not sure but he says whether in the body or uh, you know out of the body i do not know but this is what happened um had this uh, experience out of body experience uh, uh or uh, you know this spiritual experience encounter and um, and he heard words which uh, it, it says you know it was not permitted you know it was not permitted to repeat these words something that he heard there um and uh, is not given permission to you know speak these words it's not permitted for one to and it's not lawful for a man to utter uh, here on earth and so heavenly words that he heard um, now we don't know you know what is the uh, what is it that he saw and heard but uh, he was caught up in paradise and heard uh, inexpressible words that that is that is what he says that he had this experience and he says you know but uh, of myself i will not boast um and he kind of puts it in a very humble way so that people don't you know look beyond him or you know he, they don't consider him to be something larger than life bigger than life and uh, so he, he he talks about you know you don't see him talk about his spiritual experiences in any of the other apostles i mean sorry epistles right see so in any of the other letters he, he he doesn't mention any such experiences this is the first time he chooses to write to the church and share about his spiritual experience right um and uh, so the he says that uh, yeah uh, i will not boast about it but this is what happened okay and uh, he says um, i'd rather choose to boast in my infirmities you know this weakness of body weakness of mind um as a human being you know whatever i go through i'd rather boast about those okay and uh, and later on he on uh, the following verses he talks about why he will uh, boast the reason for his boasting and what it accomplishes right okay let's look at um, verses 7 onwards and lest i should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation so which means that he received, this was one such thing he received many such revelations right so this was one such experience um he heard words not permitted not lawful for a person to utter in the earthly realm uh he saw this so he's saying you know lest i should be boasted above measure by the abundance of revelations you know we know that god revealed to him about the cross uh the, the depth of revelation which was which was not there in the previous uh times in the previous dispensation god chose him to um to reveal right reveal uh, uh to the uh, um sorry um to uh, to the world the kind of revelation that he, um, he, he uh, the mysteries that were revealed to him right so we see all, all that happening and um, and paul says that lest i should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelation a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of christ to buffet me lest i be exalted above measure concerning this thing i pleaded with the lord three times that it might depart from me and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness therefore most gladly i will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me therefore i take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches in needs in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake for when i am weak then i am strong so this is the so he gives the reason for boasting in his infirmities and because of the lord's assurance that his grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect or his strength is available and just suited and just right to take care 
of that weakness. Okay. Okay. So this we will again revisit. You know, seven onwards we will look at in our next class. Uh, for there's some more uh, that we need to you know uh, need to consider because uh, he talks about the thorn in the flesh, right? So what is the thorn in the flesh? Uh, why does he say that he boasts in his infirmities? Um, we will look at it in uh, in depth in the, in the next class. Okay, so um, just a minute, please. Sorry. Um, okay, so we'll stop here. You have a good weekend. God bless. We'll meet again. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. Bye. See you.